Here again with another UFC predictions video as we have the all-important UFC 299 taking place on Saturday, March 9th. Just getting in my predictions for the main card. And remember, as always, that the card is subject to change. And what a card this is going to be. Before I give my predictions, though, just a few things. If you're a fan of the UFC and you like UFC fight reactions and UFC prediction videos and you want to help me out with the YouTube algorithm, please consider hammer fisting that like button. It does help with the channel quite a bit. Share this video with any friends that you know that like the UFC. Put this video on any one of your preferred social media platforms. Don't forget to sound off in the comment section about what your thoughts are on my predictions, predictions that you have of your own, any future fight predictions that you have, or future fight main events. When is Conor McGregor going to fight Michael Chandler? Are they ever going to fight? Is Conor ever going to fight? Who knows? And uh, anything else that you want to put. And then, of course, keep in mind that I also react to fights as well. So with about 20 seconds left to go in this particular video, click right here for my 2023 fight reaction highlight reel. I reacted to a bunch of fights during the year, and I put all the best moments in there. It's like a 20-minute video, but it's a lot of fun. So do me a favor and check that out, and make sure you leave a comment with your thoughts. And of course, last but certainly not least, don't forget to hit that sub button. You're watching the video anyway. Subscribe to the channel, join the team, and show your damn support, and be a part of something special. And you never know what you're going to see on JDev TV. This card is stacked. Now, something you might not know about before I get into my main card predictions, you have a monster making his debut in the heavyweight division on the early prelims, and that's Robles to Spain. He's six foot seven. I think he's got an 86 inch reach advantage. He can punch, he can kick. Uh, he might be the next Francis Ngannou. My only issue with them is he's a little old. But he certainly potentially could provide highlight reels for the next three to five years. So keep your eye on those early prelims for Robles to Spain. I will do a reaction to that fight just in case he becomes the next monster. But here are my predictions for the main card. Uh, let's hope that this card stays together because it's phenomenal. Starting off in the Bantamweight division, we have Piotr Jan versus Song Yadong. A very... Close fight, in my opinion. Like this one, the pendulum could swing either way. Piotr Jan hasn't had the best of luck as of late in the UFC. Uh, people are starting to find out or figure out his weaknesses. And Song Yadong fights. Man, he's got like 29, no, 28 fights already in his career. 29, 28 fights. And he's only 26 years old. So he's got a wealth of experience on that record. And, uh, I think Song Yudong is going to get the job done against Piotr Jan. Obviously, Jan is probably going to want to strike for the most part. And Song Yudong can strike, but he also can implement a little bit of wrestling. And I think that's the key. Uh, unfortunately, that's what is Jan right now's weakness is grappling, wrestling. And if he can get them, get him down and keep him down, that's going to give win him a round or two and potentially win him the fight. So I'm actually going to go with Song Yudong. And right now... Piotr Jan is the favorite in this contest as we speak, and I'm recording this video on February 29th. So happy Leap Day, everybody. Next up in the welterweight division, we have a fun fight between Gilbert Burns and Jack Della Mandalena. Currently, Della Mandalena, JDM, JDM is the favorite in this contest. Uh, his last fight was against Kevin Holland in a fight that I thought was going to be really awesome. And it was kind of boring, in my opinion. I'm not sure why, because they're both good strikers. I think Gilbert Burns is going to get the job done in this fight. Uh, Della Mandalay is 27 years old, and he does have a slight reach advantage on uh, Gilbert Burns. But I think he's not going to be prepared for the takedowns that he, Gilbert Burns is going to try to get. And if Gilbert Burns can take JDM down and hold him down, it's another advantage where he's going to probably win a round or two uh, doing that. But I think Gilbert Burns is striking is very good as well. But I think his his path to victory is going to be a takedown or two, at least to win one round, uh, obviously keeping JDM down. But I think that's the way Gilbert Burns is going to win this fight. He hasn't fought in a while. The last fight, uh, he was against uh, Bilal Muhammad. And that was like, I don't know. He fought a bunch of times in 2023 to begin the year. And then he fought Muhammad. And then he hasn't fought since because he had an arm injury. But he's 100% healthy, at least as far as I know, but I think Gilbert Burns is going to get the job done. Unfortunately, I just think 
Styles make fights, and uh, I think I don't think JDM is going to be prepared for the grappling that Gilbert Burns is going to do. Next up in the welterweight division, this is the fight I'm actually looking forward to the most. You have Kevin Trailblazer Holland against or against a guy that's making his UFC debut, Michael Venom Page. Now, I've actually never seen the Michael Venom Page fight live before, obviously, or you know, live on pay per view. But I really like what I've seen in highlights of Michael Venom Page. Uh, this is going to be a fun fight. These guys are strikers. And uh, Venom Page is a little old. And Kevin Holland's actually older than I thought he was. I think that Michael Venom Page is going to get the job done with some crazy kick or something like that. Maybe it will go to a decision. Now, if Kevin Holland would implement some wrestling, which we know he doesn't like to do, but if he were to do that, that would change the complexity of where this fight would be. Uh, that would give Kevin Holland an extreme advantage. But I don't know what Page's you know, wrestling defense looks like. I haven't watched enough of his fights in full. I just watch highlights, which his highlights are knockouts. So uh, if it stays striking, I think that Michael Venom Page can get the job done. And I'm really eagerly anticipating this fight and let's hope it delivers because I'm excited. I'm just a little worried about his age, but I mean, Kevin Holland's not that younger, not that much younger than him. So uh should be a fun fight. I hope it's a crazy knockout by either guy. If it's Kevin Holland, great. If it's Michael Venom Page, great. In the co-main event of the evening in the lightweight division, we have Dustin Poirier versus Benoit saint -Denis. This is going to be a crazy fight, I think. A lot of people are selling Dustin Poirier short. Uh, he's actually the underdog in this fight. Benoit Saint-Denis is taking a big, giant step up in the competition. In my opinion, they should have put Michael Chandler against Benoit Saint-Denis. Who cares about the Conor McGregor fight? That might not be for another six months or something like that. So, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm happy that this fight is happening, though, but I just think it would be Benoit saint is taking too much of a step up. And I think Dustin Poirier is a very skilled fighter. And I think he's going to get the job done and beat Benoit saint -Denis. I don't know exactly how it's going to go, but I think it's going to be mainly striking. Although saint can do some takedowns. His last fight was against Matt Frivola and he got that head kick. And of course, D uh, Dustin Poirier's last fight was against Justin Gaethje where he got head kicked uh, which I was super happy about because Gaethje is probably he's definitely my second favorite fighter at times he's my favorite when John Jones is inactive but uh, I'm going to go with Poirier on this one just because I think it's too much of a step up in competition but if Benoit Saint-Denis beats Dustin Poirier uh, then things are going to get very interesting and then in the and keep in mind that fight is a five round fight, so that might make the fight a little bit more slower paced. But I'm not sure. But yes, it's a five round fight in the lightweight division between Dustin Poirier and Benoit Saint Denis. And then in the main event of the evening, we have Marlon Chito Vera versus Sean O'Malley two for the bantamweight championship. Uh, I watched their first fight today. It was a lot of kicks. O'Malley like rolled his ankle and then he was kind of hobbling around and then he just didn't look very good and then he eventually got knocked down and Cheeto Vera won the fight. I think Sean O'Malley is going to win this fight. I think he's evolved as a fighter. He's got more tricks up his sleeve. Cheeto Vera is a fun fighter, but I feel like it's the same Cheeto every time and I think O'Malley can do a lot of things. Now, I mean, he is a, O'Malley is a favorite in this one. So I'm not going with many favorites on this card, but I just think O'Malley is going to get the job done against Cheeto. I don't think it should have been Cheeto in this contest. I know schedules kind of dictate where people fight and what cards they fight on, but this should have been a fight. Sean O'Malley versus Marab Dalashvili. Uh, obviously, the Cejudo versus Dalashvili fight was already booked. I wouldn't be surprised if Dalashvili is the backup fighter for this just because the guy is freaking nuts and he just wants to fight all the time. So who knows? But I am picking Sean O'Malley to win this fight and then the Sugar Show will face Marab at a future card, maybe in Abu Dhabi in October. So those are my predictions for the main card. Again, I am going with Song Yudong. I am going with Gilbert Burns. I am going with Michael Venom Page. I am going with Dustin the Diamond Poirier. And I'm going with Sugar Sean O'Malley. So keep in mind, the last card with uh, Volkanovski versus Toporia, 
I was a perfect 5-0 and for my predictions. Will that happen again? I don't know, but I'm hoping it does. So, hope everybody enjoys the card. Obviously, come back to this channel for my reactions. I'll post a reaction to the probably the main event. Maybe one other fight about an hour to two hours after the, the main card ends. And then I'll do one, one each day uh, for five days. And then as far as the Robles de Spain fight, I'll post that probably right away. Like early Sunday morning or something like that. Uh, assuming we get what we think we're going to get as a quick knockout. I want to have that on uh, on uh, on video. And you know, I might even react to Jailton Almeida versus Curtis Blades. This is a stack card. You got Macy Barber fighting. You got Matush Gamrat versus uh, Rafael Dos Anjos. You've got uh, Pedro Munoz versus Kyler Phillips. It was actually a fun fight to open up the, the prelims. And you also got uh, Michelle Pereira fighting. So, awesome card. Make sure you come back to the channel. And of course, let's do the spiel again. If you're a fan of the UFC and you like prediction videos, reaction videos, and all that more, make sure you hammer fist that like button, share the video with a friend, put this video on any one of your social media platforms. Don't forget to sound off in the comment section with your, your thoughts on my predictions, predictions of your own, any fight predictions that you have, or fight main events that you have. Conor McGregor versus Michael Chandler. When is it happening? UFC 300 predictions. And then last but certainly not least, you never know what you're going to see on JDev TV.